friends. It's Angie Yankst of the Moon and Stone Healing. Um, I am here with May's 2020, May 2020's reading. Um, and we're going to explore the energy that's around this month right now. And the allies that we can work with to kind of move through the month and kind of navigate whatever is popping up energetically. Now, if you don't know me, I'm uh, an energy healer. I'm a Reiki master. I'm a crystal healer. I am a shamanic practitioner, earth medicine practitioner, um, and I'm a tarot reader and uh, an artist and a writer. Um, this is my studio space, and uh, I work with a lot of med different medicines. So we're going to kind of call in all those things. And um, to do that, I'm working with a bunch of different decks. I'm working with the Rider Waite deck, which is kind of probably the most recognizable tarot deck. Um, I'm going to be working with Jessica Swift's Animal Allies. Now that might be reverse for you because I'm doing it this way. <laughs> but um, those are wonderful for animal, uh, an animal deck. Mystical Shaman Oracle by uh, Alberto Villa Oldo and Colette Baron Reed and Marcella Lobos. Um, the Hedge Witches uh, Botanical Oracle, which is um, plant medicine. And then for uh, crystal medicine, we're working with the Crystal Ally cards by Naisha Asian. Um, and her name is different now. It's Samaya Astor. So um, if you're not finding anything by Naisha Asian, though I think they're, this is her first deck. I think it was from 1995. So they're the old deck. She has a new deck, Crystal. I think they're called Crystal Enlightenment or something like that. Um, they're very similar, but... This, I just love the energy of the original. Maybe it's because it was my first crystal deck. So, and then we're also working with my, um, my deck called Cycles, which I'm, it's not published yet, but I'm still working on it. So we'll see some of that. Um, so one of the things I wanted to do here is just start with what energy I'm feeling. I went into meditation, pulled some cards, thought about it, journeyed, did that kind of stuff just to pull some information out. But I just want to start with the first card I pulled um, as our tarot card, which uh, if you're a tarot reader, um, this probably doesn't look like the best card to get right now. It's the Seven of Swords. We call this the Thief card. Um, um, this dude, there's a whole war going on behind him. And uh, this is an encampment here. And he, while everyone's off in battle, has come in and stolen swords and is running away. Now, is he the enemy? Is this a victory? Or is he just some kind of independent contractor thief, you know? Or what do we call those? Um, you know, just someone not allied. And that's kind of an interesting part of this card, which is, is he a double agent? Is he not affiliated with either side? Or is he the enemy? If he's the enemy, then he's successful, right? He's stealing the weapons of the enemy. If he is a traitor, that's a different idea, right? And if he's an independent contractor, then he's just exploiting and taking advantage of a situation. And so we are in this month, May 2020, is a post shutdown month in the United States and probably for most of the world, you know, where we've been facing the coronavirus and um, staying in the house. A lot of us aren't working. So people like me who, you know, I see clients one on one. So I'm not I haven't been seeing clients. I haven't been able to teach my classes. I still work, but I've been not having that one on one interaction. So we're looking at May as this post we're coming out of uh, isolation. And so I think we're really asking ourselves at this point, like, where are we with our integrity? You know, we're all a little worried, you know, even those of us who have had jobs, we are, you know, people I know who have jobs, like it's not been as busy or it's been way too busy. It's been like all these extremes for all of us, you know, now we're, you know, parenting and teaching at home. So it can be a little confusing for us. So, you know, the seven of swords asks us to check in, check in with that little voice inside of us, the conscience to ask, what is it that I'm not being, 
totally honest about. You know, what am I, what do I think I'm getting away with? What am I trying to get away with? And again, if you're going in there and sneaking around some of the rules and, you know, doing something for your own side, it's still, we're asked to look, I think, uh, you know, just shamanically and um, spiritually, we're asked to look at ourselves as not having sides, right? So this card is problematic no matter which one of them you are. And that's not to say that you're not doing something right. I just think fear is one of those things we need to really be careful of because this is a time where our vulnerability and our insecurity comes in. And, you know, just to kind of work in some of the other cards here, I, I um, pulled from the Mystical Shaman the Completion card. And this shows um, the Ouroboros the snake eating its own tail. There's a kind of completion happening here. We're, we're ending a cycle and that can be really valuable to know because that means, Hey, this isn't going to feel like April. It's going to feel like we're coming into a different era. Like maybe it's, we're all going back into, you know, society again, it's going to be different. And that's what this card is asking you to do. Check in, make sure you're in your highest integrity and that you're acting out of, your interests, um, but not only your interests, but the interests of everybody. And that's the connection that I think this card can be really valuable for is it's, it's really an internal, um, struggle. So, so swords are, uh, the suit of air. They deal with the mind and the intellect in, um, the Rider Waite tar Tarot. Um, they, are often with voice okay they work with voice now voice isn't a big one on this this is more about except for speaking one's truth and and being honest about where we're at and i think there's that works on many many levels okay um because we're also asked with this card to not hide right not hide our intentions not hide how we're feeling some of us might be pressured to go back to work before we feel comfortable doing that Maybe you have an underlying condition that no one knows about. Maybe you've got a little asthma and you're really afraid to go out there into the world. Maybe you aren't afraid of that and you really want to go back to work and you're afraid to say it because everybody else has their own circumstances. Well, this card's saying, hey, this is a time to really dig in and figure out your truth and speaking that and doing that. So anyway, just to get back to the swords for a minute, we're dealing with all these upper chakras, okay? The throat, the third eye, the crown, and what we're, you know, quote unquote, getting away with or not getting away with. So the powerful part is that the swords often deal with the mind and perception. That's why so many of them are challenging in the minor arcana. Um, they're challenging because uh, working with perception means that it's ultimately flawed, right? Our perception, which is human and limited, is going to be flawed. So the, you know, the tarot creators and writers really want us to think about, you know, is your perception real? And perception often exaggerates things, right? He's stealing more than he can even carry at this point. Um, so we have to really check in with our perception. Is it matching our truth? Is it ma matching the rest of what's going on. Um, and so this is a month of integrity and walking in your truth. And I know it's been really challenging. I mean, it's been challenging for those of us who work both in person and online to continue to walk in our integrity and not do comparisons uh, between what we're doing, and what other people are doing, um, how well everybody is doing compared to us. I mean, we're in social media so much more on, on a, on a daily basis. My, you know, requests for friends has gone up like fourfold and I'm sure those are bots too. But, um, one of the things is there's just a lot of people interacting online. So it's really easy to get bogged down with the comparison. So this is saying like, what aren't you being honest about here? Like you're not seeing their struggles, you know, and that's, that's important information. Okay, so how to work with this, we're going to start to bring in some of these allies. So the animal ally that came through really loud and clear, it literally fell out of the deck and then I put it back in the deck, shuffled again and pulled it again, 
is frog. <laughs> um, I love frog. I don't, I didn't put it back in for any reason other than I just thought I was being, um, sloppy with my shuffling. So I have a little serpentine frog here. Isn't he cute? Um, I love working with frog energy. So frog energy and water element are like intertwined. You can't take one out with the other. So this is about emotions. And so it's interesting to get this juxtaposed with, you know, our challenge is going to be with the mind. Our emotions mean that we're also very vulnerable. So um, you can work with frog um, with that water element. So thinking about it as purification and cleansing and really... Um, you know, letting the water roll off us, right? Um, they also are incredibly sensitive. They absorb um, water through their skin. They don't drink water from what I understand. Um, so their skin is very important. And if you're someone like me who has super reactive skin, you know, working on the skin is, is really important. Um, and working and healing the skin by hydration. Okay. Water is incredibly important, which is so funny because four, three or four days ago, I started drinking a gallon of water a day. Um, like I was pretty much close to that, but I've been trying to do it really like monitoring my water intake and frog asks us to be really, really hydrated. Um, and to drink a lot of water and to work with water and to take baths and to cleanse. They're also like asking for exquisite self-care in terms of your energy field and in terms of what you're letting absorb into your system. So working with frog is valuable, um, for protection, uh, protect, I mean, you should be protecting, um, you can also work with snake because we're working with this completion card as well. You can use snake, but when you use snake, use snake in its most vulnerable, uh, aspect, not the, you know, viper. Um, you're using the post skin shedded snake. Um, when I was a girl, my grandmother used to have railroad ties along her driveway her rock driveway and it was butted up against game land state game lands which is in pennsylvania you know uh, places where people can hunt and it's owned by the state um so we had lots of critters all the time and we would uh overturn the railroad tries like just turn it up so we could like uncover whatever was living under there and you know there's all these snails and mice and snakes and we found a snake the skin was there and it was in its pre skin post shedding. So probably like the day or two of it being super, super vulnerable. Um, and that place is kind of where we're at right now. We're in a very vulnerable position. So if you're working with snake energy, you'll work with it in that really vulnerable place. The skin is off. That was a hard, hard process. April was that process of shedding. And we're in that place where our skin is soft and supple. And we are open to all experiences. We also can be really affected by negativity and other people's fears and anxieties and anger. Um, so frog is very similar to that energy too. So working for protecting our energy field and our, you know, our energetic um, signature, so to speak. Now, what if you subscribe to my memberships, we're doing our journey this month with frogs. So uh, you'll, if you sign up for the shamanic journey part of that, you'll get a journey with frog to work with some of that energy. Now, plant medicine, chamomile was loud and clear. My chamomile is all starting to come up and be really excited about the spring. So chamomile is about soothing. This is one that you can make as a tea and use as a wash for your face. You can also drink it. It's very good for sleeping and for relaxing and for anxiety and fears. So working with chamomile as a tea, as a tincture, as um, even like for skincare would be really, really good. Again, working with that frog energy for that earth medicine. And a couple of stones were jumping out of the deck and then um, I like absolutely saw them in my head as, you know, connecting together. So the first one was Amazonite. 
And this is all about your personal truth, which goes back to this, like speaking your truth. Okay. I love this piece. Amazonite with Smoky would be a perfect combo. You can find them pretty easily because they grow together. Um, so they're wonderful for soothing the throat. So you can place it straight on the throat. The, this is an out, this is a very feminine stone. So if you have worked with Amazonite, it has a very strong feminine energy, like female warrior energy. This is a perfect ally for holding and keeping boundaries. So keeping boundaries is important when we have vulnerabilities and our skin is soft and not quite hardened. Um, so working with Amazonite and Smoky together would be great because it has a grounding element. Smoky is very grounding and protective. It's also very purifying. So the Amazonite with Smoky would be a great ally. If you just have Amazonite or just have Smoky, you can work with either of them. Of course, Amazonite was the one that came through, but that doesn't mean you can't adapt and adjust. So working anything with that turquoise color would be great. Amazonite has such a beautiful energy that you, if you can get a piece, that would be great. Another stone that came through is Moonstone. And I think we're going to be feeling the cycles this month. Um, now, month traditionally is a really lusty month. Um, it is all about relationships and sex and uh, connection and love. Um, again, focusing on relationships that don't necessarily have to be sexual, but often are in May because May, this is the traditional fertility time, right? The time when things start coming up and um, having babies, all our, all our animals are having babies. So we're talking about cycles again, another super feminine stone and moonstone has a couple different varieties. Um, and they all look like slightly different. Now this is a rainbow moonstone. Now, technically this is actually like a white labradorite, not, not a feldspar, which is what moonstone is. So, um, but you can work with rainbow moonstone, but I prefer working with peach moonstone right now. I think this is going to be more of a, more of a connected ally, or you can work with the black moonstone. They're both really good for this time. Uh, the peach moonstone is going to work more with the feminine cycle. So if you're dealing with some of the, um, mood swings that we're noticing just from being indoors and getting rammy and all that stuff, you're going to go with peach moonstone. If you're finding your shadow self, your anger, your frustration, fears from childhood, fears about insecurity, not having enough, blah, blah, blah. You're going to want to work with black moonstone. Okay. This is going to be more of the shadow. This is more of the mood, the hormonal mood stuff. Okay. So, um, so good allies here. And then the third one, I like to pull three. Just because it gives you variety, you can pick one or multiple of them. I like to work with three together. It's a really great number for mojo bags, for um, grids, for altars, things like that. So um, the third one is Cherowite. Uh, now Cherowite is a really dark, very protective stone. It's, per I don't know if you can tell, but it's like purple and black. Um, it's an opening of the psychic channel. So this is going to, and if you're already open feeling that frog energy and that psychic intuitive energy, like frog is bringing forth that sensitivity, um, chair away just supports you. Okay. It supports the third eye opening and the third eye sensitivity. Um, so you can work with chair away. You can place on the third eye. It's great for meditation. It's also super protective. And that's why I think it's coming through because it's not only, um, opening and psychic protection um but it protects the entire energy field as you're doing psychic work so that's that's really wonderful and the chair white message with naisha asian's cards are the path of service so remembering and getting back to our seven of swords that you know our work right now is to be of service to everyone and to everyone be of service to us right it only works if it's everybody doing this, right? If one person is sneaking in behind in, during the war, then we're not kind of working with the energy that's, that's offered to us by the goddess, by the universe, you know, which is, hey, you've got this real opportunity to see that all is one and we're all interconnected. 
one thing I've really, that's been coming up in my meditations over and over and over again, which is that if you can't see now that something in China, a cough in China doesn't affect you, you know, that would be shocking because this is a time where we're seeing how interconnected we all are. And that's not in some woo-woo level, just, you know, somebody who coughs in China can make us shut down our entire government for a month. So we need to understand that this is a spiritual lesson. You know, it's a spiritual gift to go through this because we are seeing firsthand how interconnected we are. And in my, my, um, work is um with the cycles deck it, we're coming in on the north so there's wisdom coming in as a gift and it is the lover so this is another card that deals with relationships this was the ritual that came up which is to look at the way we're balanced and again another snake is on here i put a little snake on there um so it's all about balancing the masculine and feminine energy so we have so much feminine energy coming through for this month Remember that the solar energy, the masculine energy, the divine masculine is a really powerful gift. It's a gift for us to use. So we're soothing feminine parts of ourselves, but we can do those in masculine ways. We can make lists to get those things done. We can honor um, by action and not by uh, reception, right? Like we're going forward. We're not moving back. So um, so that's the reading for this month. If you have any questions, pop them into the comments. Um, and like I mentioned, I have subscription services. So I do these for the group, a collective for the group, a much longer reading, um, for my subscribers of my memberships. And I have different levels. Um, I do one where you can get a reading at the full moon, one for the new moon, and you can get a shamanic journey. So those are the three kind of base offerings they're all collective so they're readings for everybody um and you can pick different levels one where you get one of those one that you get two of them and one where you get all three and then you can do a personal reading that's another level uh once a month and you get to decide when that is and it's just for you so um if you're interested you can go to my website and see it's angieinks.com um and or the moonandstone.com and I have lots of other readings and offerings in the um, shop on my website. I also teach out of Alta View Wellness Center. We're currently closed because of our state shutdown. So when I get back up and running, if you're in the Harrisburg area or central Pennsylvania, um, upper Maryland area, uh, please consider coming to one of my workshops, classes. I do personal one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, I would love to work on you one-on-one. -on -one, so... Uh, thanks, guys. Abrazos y besos.